our host rightly said, I'm Jessica Laditon. I'm the founder of Pop Up Africa, um, and we run Africa-inspired events. Um, unfortunately, I don't cook, other than for my family, of course. I do the easy part, which is eating and criticizing. But I'm joined by the lovely Ire, who is the co-owner of Ikoi. Um, and we are going to hear a lot about Ikoi and the concept behind it. So before we delve into the discussion on the modernization of African food, it would be great if you, um, Ire, could tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey into opening Ikoi. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, my name is Ire. I co found the, it took us two years to find a space, or two years with a landlord to allow us into a space. Um, and uh, since then, it's just been, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, but but I, th I, th I, think w I think we're finally close to where, w where we need to be. Tell us a bit about your dishes, Atiko. You've got some interesting dishes that you offer there. What, are the influ what influences the creation of each dish? Uh, so, I mean, I, I, guess, I guess the most popular dish and the most Instagram dish is the plantain. Um, <laughs> and uh, got some and, fans here. And, uh, <laughs> and how did we get to the plantain? We got to the plantain. The plantain was actually the first dish that was developed uh, when we were playing around with with, with ingredients. And and uh, as 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 we're not we're not a Nigerian restaurant, and we're not uh, we're not trying to be. Uh, we're just taking these ingredients, and we just think the ingredients from West Africa are great and they should be showcased, and they should be, uh, a, a, a lot of them belong in everyday pantries, the way you have uh, black peppercorn in, in people's cupboards. There are some spices in, in West Africa that should be in everyone's cupboard because, because they're amazing. Um, so uh, in, terms, in, in terms of how, how, how we, we, we create the dishes, Jeremy, who is a chef, I'm not the chef, um, he feeds off my experiences and, and what, what I've told him about my, my memories of dining in Nigeria and the dishes that stood out and the flavors, especially the flavors that stood out. And he takes that and also takes things from his, his memories of, of dining experiences that he's had as, as, as growing up and basically tries to create, recreate his memories in using our ingredients. So we don't we don't try and recreate West African food per se. It's it's uh, it's just using those ingredients to create food that probably more people can relate to. And what has been the general perception? Um, how have people received your your food? Well, <laughs> uh, it's it's been we've had all sorts of reception. Uh, with when we started, when we opened, it was no one tells you when you open a restaurant it's going to be busy because. It's new, uh, but that, that doesn't last very long. Uh, so I guess when we opened, we were busy and everyone seemed to be loving it, but then they were coming to take a picture on Instagram and say they've been, and then they were not gonna come back. We, we, we had no idea, so we had a big rush, and then probably six months later, it went dead. Uh, nobody was coming in, and, uh, so it be, and then we had a few reviews out which brought in different kinds of guests. So, for example, Jazz Curran, Jazz Curran writes for the Times and he reviewed for the Times. As soon as this review came out, we had uh, white middle class people because they're his readership. And we had that for like a month or, or two. Uh, and then we had another review that brought a different kind of uh, guest. So, so we've had, we've had different, uh, different receptions. I mean, initially we clashed with, with West Africans. Uh, West Africans, probably more so the diaspora as opposed to West Africans that live in Africa. It's interesting. Yeah, because the diaspora were coming to us. Unfortunately, for everyone, including us, we, we were marketed differently. And because we were the only people using those ingredients in central London, people made us, championed us as the West African or Nigerian restaurants in central London, which were not. But uh, that, that message led to West Africans coming in through the door and demanding swallow, which we... <laughs> which we obviously couldn't deliver because it's not what we were doing. Uh, and, and then they, they get really angry because they think that they've been tricked and or deceived, but, but we haven't said any time that we were this, but just because of what we're doing, I guess, 
people like to box things and it's easier for people to understand. We, we, we became the heroes of, of African food in central London. So yeah, th that, 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 that caused a bit of a struggle because we couldn't meet those expectations. Uh, so so that, that, the diaspora was not, I mean, we still, they still come in sometimes, up until yesterday, asking for swallow. And, we, and it's still, it's a hard conversation to have because they, they really think that we are, uh, are trying to deceive them by saying we serve swallow by, to get them in, and then when they sit down, we serve them something different. Uh, yeah, so I, I, it's, it's a restaurant that's hard to market or hard to define because it's, it's just, we're just trying to cook the best food we can and make sure that the guests have the best possible experience. Where the food is, co is coming from is not that relevant to us as long as it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's about the guests. So if, 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 if we say we're West African and we box ourselves like that, we, we might not be able to use um, s a, p a particular ingredient that is probably phenomenal because it's not from that part of the world. So the, the, the boxing for us, it restricts re uh, creativity and it restricts, um, it, and, and if, if creativity is restricted, then the guest experience is also not as good as it could have been. And you touched on it briefly, but how, how, how would you say the media have um, influenced people's perception of the restaurant? Um, and on a wider level, how do you think the media influences people's perception of Africa in general? The, the influence is strong. Um, the media, also, I think because with Africa, they don't really understand, I mean, the, the, the probably the, the, main, the main class media that writes in the UK, they don't really understand and if they don't understand something, then they either stay away from it or they write things that are very vague and very... So, so I, I think the media has... Because they, don't really know what we're, they didn't really know what we were doing or what we were about, they obviously, for them, it's easy to say, well, we're a South African restaurant. And because they don't really need to go further than that. Um, I think, it's, it's, I think if, if the, 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 the press were more open to learning, and more open to asking us what we're doing and, and trying to take it from there, then we probably would have had a better experience. But the media will come in and they, will, they won't ask any, any, any questions. They'll, eat, they'll taste the food and then they'll write a review that's based on their experience. And, but they don't know what we're trying to do. So uh, I, think, I think the media can be harmful in that way because, for example, the, the BBC uh, uh, video that's gone viral with us, in a, that, they took in the first uh, week that was sent pretty much everyone in Nigeria was having that video on their phone and the title of the video said Taste of Nigeria in Central London. So obviously Nigerians were coming and asking for a taste of Nigeria in Central London which we couldn't, which we couldn't uh, provide. So the, the media has, 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 a, has a very strong influence because people don't, there's no time anymore. No one has time to discover what things are you go on what people tell you they are, and you just think that those people are, are going to tell you what it really is, because that's their job. But if it's a cuisine that people don't, that are not comfortable with, then I think you have to ask a bit more questions, because they, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, so I think it's up to, to the guests as well to try and... I mean, some people come to a restaurant and they don't, they don't look on the website, so they don't know anything about what we serve. <laughs> and they come in and they think they know what we serve, because they think it's Nigerian, and then they get angry because it's not. But if they just two minutes on the website, you see <laughs> there's a menu there. <laughs> but but they 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 just they just think that they know because there's this idea of what we are, and and it's caused a lot of problems. Um, yeah. Um, so going back to the theme on the modernization of African food. I know obviously Africa is huge and I don't want to offend anybody um, and food in Africa and even in some countries in Africa are very, very different. But generally speaking, to what extent do you think that the modernization of food or cuisine from across Africa reflects modern day Africa and the diaspora? Uh, so I guess if, if you're talking about mo mo modern, modernizing African food, then that will be making African food more relevant to modern life. Like, so I think African food in Africa for a long time was, was eaten for sustenance. And people ate heavy food because they needed to be full to, because it's a lot of physical labor. And basically, it, is, it, was, it wasn't eating to, as pleasure. It was eating to, to live. Uh, so 
I think our food is moving on from that. And I think that's why the restaurant industry is probably, is probably growing in Africa because people are now eating as a form of pleasure, as a, for, as a social en entertainment thing. Um, and that, I guess, will mean that the food has to progress, that the food has to change in that direction because it's hard to serve really heavy food in, in, in those settings. So uh, I think that in, in terms of the food will have to, I guess, people, I, I think also because, well, I can only speak about Nigeria, we don't, most people that have, can afford to eat out have chefs at home who probably cook as well as they do in the restaurant. So, they, they, I mean, there hasn't, been, there hasn't been any need for anyone to, to really push the food to a different level because Every, everyone is every everyone eats at home and they they're happy with they're eating at home and people don't really want it to change but I think it, it was going to have to because as more restaurants open they're going to have to compete with each other and to compete with each other they're going to have to be a bit different so I think that will make the cuisine see different angles because people will have to put their own take on it or people will have to um, think about it differently just so that they can survive in the markets where restaurants are competing. And with this modernization, particularly back home in Africa on the continent, how, how are you seeing these changes reflecting in food and, the food and drink industry? So I think uh, it, it's, you know, it's a good thing. I think food is, food is, is, be, is now is becoming a thing and people are recognized. I mean, parents are allowing their, their kids to go and study food and uh, not, they don't have to be lawyers and doctors anymore. They can actually... Uh, um, uh, go to Cordon Bleu and go back home because when you go back home as an African, people are, I mean, are going to pay money because you become a celebrity chef. And uh, I think that was probably, I mean, I mean now if, if you're opening a, a restaurant or a hotel in, in Nigeria and you want a chef, a head chef, 20 years ago you'd have gone to get an expert from South Africa because that's what you do and that's how people would trust your food because it's a white man cooking it. But now it's, it's, it's changing. You, uh, you, people want Nigerian talent because they're, the Nigerian talent is becoming, it's becoming more popular and they're becoming more accepted and they're going to study food and they're coming back and they're doing things. So I think it's, 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 it's going to grow in that way as well. Uh, the more Nigerians go into the market and the more Nigerians feel comfortable with food, I think it's, it's, only, it's, only, going to, it's only going to get better. Great. And since opening Ikoi in 2017, have you seen any changes to the food and drink market here in the UK? Mm. Uh, I, I guess there have been changes. I think th there's a move towards more sustainable eating. There's a move, a, 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 a move towards more people are wanting to know where their ingredients are from. Um, people are, uh, they, yeah, they want to be more aware of what's going on. It's not, it's not enough to just serve people a plate of food and, and, and they need to know, if they're paying for it, they need to know where's your beef sauce and, and they, they, they want, things are becoming more ethical and people are becoming more aware of the issues that are surrounding uh, so, uh, sourcing food. So I think, uh, and also I think it's also moving towards a more plant-based um, people diet. I don't know, how, I don't know if that's going to last. I, I don't know if that's, I actually don't know if that's a trend or if that's something that's changing generally. Uh, but I think that those are the main thing. I mean, we, we, when we opened, we didn't want to have a vegan or vegetarian menu because we just thought that's not what our food is about. Uh, and, and, and also vegetarians, you don't get meat eaters going to ve vegan restaurants and asking for meat. So why, why should they come? But, but, but it took a while, we embraced it, and I think now that we have, <laughs> we, we, we have a vegan menu that's amazing because we don't just give them a salad and and uh, whatever, like potatoes. We, we actually try and make it interesting and create. And also, I think our flavors make that easier to do. Um, we, can, we can create dishes that probably uh, the, the pub serving normal food can't because, because, of, because of the flavors we have and, and we work with. Uh, so if, you, if you're vegan or vegetarian, come to Ikoi because our, our menu for you guys is great. So you spoke about flavors. I'm interested to know uh, how you source your ingredients, particularly your ingredients from, um, from across Africa. Uh, how have you been able to import some of those ingredients? So our, what we call our Ikoi pantry is sourced from all over the place. I don't think there's, I can say there's one 
one channel. <laughs> it's from people's suitcases when they're coming. It's from <laughs> it's from <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 from Peckham. It's from it's from me buying plantain where I live in in uh, in North London. Um, it's yeah. It's it's. I, I think if if there was a crisis and we had to secure all our ingredients, it was probably struggle because now it's very whatever we can find, and there's no, we don't have a formula to getting our, our, our African products, but people have been very kind and generous, and people think about us, they, in fact, our Africans bring us things, sometimes they, they, they travel, and we don't know them, they just come and say, oh, we thought about you, you from Africa, which has been great, uh, and also we've started to, to pickle a lot of our, like the abalamo that we use for some dishes, we, we, we get in bulk and we preserve it, which, which, which also changes the product as well. Uh, makes it more interesting. So we're trying to find ways to, to, to preserve these things so that we don't need to get them all the time. That's interesting. Um, and finally, moving on. So the future of food and drink in Africa, where do you see the future for the food and drink industry in Africa and also for the food and drink industry for Africans in the diaspora? Uh, it probably starts with the second one, so for the diaspora. Because I guess that's what that's where that, that that's uh, the markets I, I I I'm more comfortable with. Um, that said, we don't really have a good relationship with the diaspora. <laughs> so because um, the diaspora, to be fair to them, they're looking for a taste of home, which is what they're lacking, um, and they want to, something that they can't have. Uh, uh, yeah, in the UK, so so they come to us for that reason, which which makes sense. But uh, we can't really pro provide that. But I think, I, I mean, I, 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 I try and, because we've managed to, to pull this restaurant off, a few young Africans, I, I, I meet with them and try and figure out how they can also break into the market. Uh, and and, and there are things that like, things are in the pipeline and people are, are, are finding ways to, to make our food more accessible, but still, it's still for us. Um, uh, I mean, so, 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 so what that means is that ways where you can have a, a restaurant that has the feel of, of West Africa or that has West Africans in it, but still doesn't isolate everyone else. Um, and other people from everywhere in the world can still come and enjoy that and, and be part of it without feeling that they're, they're without feeling alienated. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I think that that would probably or should 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 grow. Um, it's just it, West Africans find it hard, and I can attest to that to break into in, in, into the food industry, especially in central London, because uh, it's it's tough. And uh, I I think we just need to work a bit harder and try a bit harder, but I, it's definitely doable. Uh, so, in answer to your question, uh, for the, in in terms of how African food is going to move in the future for the diaspora. I think it's, 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 it's definitely going to become a thing. Great. And, and, and in, in, in Africa, likewise, it's also Africans love food. And now that food is becoming accepted and food is becoming more, people are getting more involved in it. Like, I, I, I mean, I wasn't at the GTB food and drink, food is it and called? Drink, yeah. yeah, but I, I hear that th that's massive and you have everyone going, going like the whole of Lagos is there. So I, I mean, that, that tells you something. That tells you that th th there's an interest in food and people are, are, are recognizing this market. So I think it, it, can, only, it can only continue to grow um, as restaurants like, like NOC uh, be, uh, continue to flourish and, and more restaurants like that open, um, I think. And also Africans, the, the, the middle class is growing. So as the middle class grows, people continue to eat out more and it's going to become more of a thing. So hopefully it, it moves in that direction as well. Great. Thank you, Ire. Um, as much as I would love to continue asking you questions, I won't hog the mic because I'm sure a lot of you have some questions for Ire. So if anyone's got any questions, if you don't mind sticking your hand in the air. I think we've got one there. Um, hi, Ire. Thanks for sharing your story. Um, I'm interested in the way you've spoken about how the media kind of got the message, seems to have gotten the message wrong. So my question is, 
what you wish that the media had asked you, um, what is the project behind Ikoyi London? It seems food, good food I've always thought about like a good book, right? It's specific to a place and time and it takes you somewhere without having to leave where you are, somewhere specific. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about what your project is and what you wished people had engaged you with, uh, at Ikoyi London with in the first place. The thing is, because the project is, is quite personal, it, it's not, it, it, we also struggle to, 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 to box it or to, to call it something. Uh, because it's really, I don't think the restaurant could exist without both of us uh, being so involved in it as, as we are. Uh, because it, it, it's, we kind of define it. Um, and obviously I'm Nigerian, Jeremy is Canadian uh, is, and, and Chinese. Um, and we are Londoners. So, so our, our outlook is not, we don't have one way of thinking about things. And uh, we also live in, in this city. Also, our restaurant is, is in a place where we have to be, we have to appeal to, to London. Our restaurant is for London because it can't be for, and it can't be for West Africans because West Africans don't, they're not going to come in every day because we don't have, uh, we're not surrounded by West Africans. We're surrounded by different, different types of Londoners. So we have to be relevant to them. West Africans will come, but they'll come when they can. Um, but then, if, if, we, if we created a restaurant that's just focusing on West Africans and trying to please them, then, then we probably won't be there for very long. Um, no, it's true, because we have to be, we have to be relevant to our market. Um, so, I, we, are, we, we are trying to champion West African ingredients. And I, th and I think, to an extent, we've, um, we, we've, we've, done, we've done that to, to a small extent, because some of the ingredients we use People didn't really, plantain you can get probably, mo in most, m most places around London you can get plantain, but now people are now actually seeing that. But be before that, the plantain was there in the shelves, but nobody knew that it was plantain and it was just ignored. Or so even what to do with it as well. Exactly. So I think if, even if, w without being a, f a West African or a Nigerian restaurant to the core, we still, are going to influence how the, the food is perceived because um, it's going to open people's minds that, oh, okay, you can actually do something like this with yeah. food from that part of the world. And I, I, think, I think that's almost enough because th that, that's where the message begins and that's where it, uh, people start to open their minds and people start, to, and, and all more West Africans or Africans feel more comfortable coming in and doing something similar. Um, I, I, I'm aware that I haven't answered your question as to how, how we define ourselves. Um, a restaurant? <laughs> a, a restaurant, uh, try, yeah, as I said, we're trying to uh, cook the best food we can. We're using West African ingredients. We also use, I mean, we don't just use West African, we, we, all our produce is from the UK. Uh, we, we, we go through great lengths to source our, our, our fish, our meat, to make sure that we're serving the best, the best produce possible. So. That, that's a different angle that's not really spoken about. Um, and I, I guess coupling those two things, I don't know what to call it. I'm, I, I, yeah, I, I also struggle. When people ask me, oh, you have a restaurant? Oh, what, 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 what sort of restaurant is it? And I'm like, which story do I tell them? Like, where do, because once, if it's not two words or one word, people stop listening. They're like, just tell me, is it French, is it Italian? It's not any of those things, because if I say Nigerian or West African, I get in big trouble with it. Nigerians and West Africans, when they come to the restaurant and it's not, it's not authentic or it's not, it's not what they, they expect it to be. So we have to be careful with, with how we define the restaurant. Uh, I think we, we just try to define the restaurant based on what we're doing and uh, the, food, the food we're cooking and what experience we're trying to uh, create, as opposed to what cuisine we're, we fall under. And I guess you, uh, you were saying earlier that the restaurant is kind of a story of your own background and yeah. your, part, your business exactly. partner's background as well yeah. and your likes. Exactly. So, so it's, 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 it's a mixture. I mean, mo some of the dishes, uh, literally, I kid you not, my business partner, Jeremy, dreams them up. <laughs> and and y y people think that's strange, but he actually does see food in, in a bit of a different way. And... He, we will discuss this dish before it's been it's been cooked or tested, and he'll and he'll tell me exactly how it's going. 
be and how it's going to taste like. Lo and behold, he creates it and it tastes exactly like that. So, so it, it's, it's, it, there are different parts that go into it. I mean, we see it as an art as well. And uh, just, just the, the freedom to be creative and the freedom to, to, do, to do new and different things without having to be under one certain uh, yeah, cuisine or, or using one type of ingredient. Great. Any other questions? Hi, Ira. How are you? Good. How are you? Fine. Um, this is a compliment first. I heard that you um, had some participation at the Conduit. Yes. Yes. I just wondered, how did you get that? Did they approach you or did you approach them? Because it's a really new club and uh, I was quite impressed with they, that. So yeah, they approached us, yeah. Wow. And what, what happened? Uh, we cooked a uh, dinner, yeah. Okay. Was it like um, an event or were you there as a chef? And you, no, and you had yeah. Some, yeah it so was Jeremy, yeah, we're just there. We're just there cooking dinner for the night. Oh, wow. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you've answered the question already. Why is it called Ikui? Uh, okay, so someone, someone came to the door yesterday and asked me that question. And I said, because it can be, because I can call it whatever I like. <laughs> 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 and also, the, 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 the name is, is I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite personal. Um, I, I, I had a different idea in my head when I, when I, when I okay, so I, I if, let me just say it now then. Um, I, the, the name came up because I was trying to think of a way to access Europe or access uh, London with our food. Uh, so, so, so the most comfortable way to do that. In my head, I thought, if I look at Lagos as, a, as, a, as an expert, where is the most comfortable introduction to Lagos? Or where, 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 where do you feel that you possibly could be somewhere else? Uh, and I saw Ikoi, maybe VI. Um, so that, that's because initially when, when, when the idea of the restaurant came, it, wasn't, it was just me. And I, uh, Jeremy came on because I asked him to ask, write me a menu. And he was free at the time. And then we started working together. It's become this. But my initial restaurant was not, I'm not a chef. So it was more like uh, it was more casual, more like Nando's, and and I was I was just looking at it at how I was going to use African food and introduce it to, to London that way. And uh, but so yeah, that's where the idea came. And and when 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 the restaurant changed, I didn't feel I had to change the name. So yeah, that, that that's why it stuck. Thank you. One lady at the front here. Thank you so much. Hi, Ire. How are you? Um, so in case you're planning on playing low-key, humble Nigerian and getting through this whole conversation without saying Michelin star, <laughs> just let it be known. <laughs> because it was just, I needed to take a moment to honor you. I have no question, and I will be brief with my honor to say um, I first met you and Jeremy at the pop-up at 154 Art Fair. And it was puff puff ganache that I thought, what's the bougie people doing? <laughs> but it changed my life. And just following your story through the supper clubs and everything, the determination, the passion, everything is there. It's well deserved the Michelin star and just saying it again. So thank you for everything that you and Jeremy and the fantastic thank you very team much. have thank done. You. Thank you. I think we had a lady over here. I really just wanted to heal you too, because um, a long time ago I had the, um, it was a gussi and mango sorbet, and I thought it was the most mind-blowing thing that I've ever had. Um, and I tried to duplicate it tonight. It's like, a gussi and mango works together, and everyone was like, uh, no thank you. But it was the most amazing thing I've ever had. Um, I had one little question, though. Is it okay to call you an African restaurant or African fusion? Just curious, not trying to box you. Don't just like curious. Fusion. We don't like fusion. Don't like fusion. Yes. All right, then. So, fusion I mean, doesn't mean anything. In my opinion, um, but uh, African restaurant, it, it, de it depends on what an African restaurant is, because what is an African restaurant? Well, because I've been to a lot of Asian restaurants that are not necessarily Chinese. Well, Neither are they Asia is a big place. This is, I have a problem with that as well. Mm -hmm. what, what is an African restaurant? I don't know. If, if you can tell me the things that an African restaurant needs to tick, maybe we can tick them. I mm -hmm. don't know, but I, I, I just don't know what an African restaurant is. 
Okay. Well, you won your award without <laughs> defining yourself, so kudos to you. Thank All right. You. We've got a gentleman towards the back there. Um, Ire, hi. Um, how have you taken on the challenge of, well, it might sound like not the most ideal way of saying this, but breaking like that stubbornness mold? Um, I think the French have shown, the French kind of cuisine has shown that in the last couple of years, um, they've been quite stubborn with their cuisine, they've not moved along, and as a result, kind of modern times have shown it's, they're struggling. How do we take that as like African cuisine, take us out of that stubborn mold so that you're not, you're not it's not a challenge for the uh, diaspora mm -hmm. to feel like they take different? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I wish I'd had the answer to that. Um, I, I think it's just, I don't know, because, because I, I, don't, I don't know if I, I mean, I, I am part of the diaspora, but I, 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 I grew up in Nigeria. I've, I've, had, I've had both worlds, so I, I, I don't really think as a diaspora in that sense. Um, I guess they need to stop thinking about African food, whatever that is, in the way they are thinking about it. So they need, it needs to go beyond what their mom or their grandma cooks at home. Because if everyone cooked what their mom and grandma cooked at home in a restaurant, then, I mean, it's not going to work. So if, if they can see beyond that and, and get excited that, our, that plantain is being served in St. James's, I think that's exciting. I, I think it's, it's exciting that we can, you know, have, have jollof rice uh, being eaten by some of these great chefs, the biggest chefs in the world, and these, these great people are acknowledging that, I mean, it's, it's still, it's still, there's still something to be proud of, and I think if, if, if people can see that, then I, then I think we'll probably get, get, get beyond, beyond the stubbornness, hopefully. Yeah, um, I just want to say what you've done is amazing. Um, Thank you. And I think your, yeah, your humbleness is a bit too much. You need to, <laughs> I mean, seriously, because guys, this guy is, like, is unbelievable what he's been able to achieve if anybody knows from back in the day. Um, but is, is this thing that I'm really interested in is your resistance. And I, I, I think it's something that a lot of people should be encouraged, this resistance from being pigeonholed. And, and I think that when we're seeing all the talks and all the different industries are, uh, have come to play and this desire for people to want to reference or relate to you in like two words or two syllables or give you a checklist of things to define whatever your architecture is, whatever your fashion um, approach to. I'm forgetting the important things about process. You know, people that are really interested in creating great work or, and that's a historical thing. I mean, we, if we want to be a great continent and we want to be contributors to a great continent, we can't, we need to resist this desire to be pigeonholed. So I really want to commend you on that. But, please, Swallow is correct. <laughs> and, 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 it's, and, I, and I'm going to give you a good, I'm going to give you an example, right? In Nok Alara in Lagos, right? I think how Nok started, it was really interesting. But now they have Amala from <laughs> Wednesday to Sunday. Okay, if you guarantee me that every oh, Thursday no. if I sell Amala, Let's the restaurant's going to be full. I have, a, I have an, I, I have, a, I I have an idea no for problem. you. We'll just create one window, like, to round the corner from John James's. <laughs> Everyone will just come there. That'll be the swallow corner. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, no, congratulations. Yeah, to, 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 to be fair, we've actually tried, we're, we're not that close to swallow. And we, we, we've, we've done, we did some experimenting in, in, in the, in the, at the beginning uh, with pounded yam, and we tried to make it work, but it's just, it, it's, we struggled. So we'll probably try again. I mean, <laughs> no, 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 it, it, did, it didn't leave the kitchen because, uh, bec because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't there yet. And, and because we, yeah, and, I mean, for, before we present it to the guests, it has to be, we have to feel that it's, 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 it's good enough and it didn't quite make it, so. <laughs> We've got a gentleman here in the middle. Can I, can I just give you my commiserations? Because interviewing him is like interviewing Bob Dylan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Bob will never answer. He's one of the greatest singer-songwriters of our, of our lifetime. And 
you know, he'll never tick a box for you. But talking about that, what are your plans for initiating and continuing these conversations that we are having? As my, you know, my friend up here said, mm. that uh, you refuse to be boxed, ticked, pigeonholed, and so on. But that creates a conversation. Mm. And the more the conversation goes along, the better it is for the economics of your business mm. and the people mm -hmm. who come after you. So what plans do you have for getting this conversation out there? See, w w when, when, I, when I try to have the conversation, it's always me being different. It's always seen as me being defensive. Uh, <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been stopped from replying to to Google um, reviews and reviews online because apparently I I I, I, I go too far, and uh, <laughs> it, it's probably it's probably yeah in terms of PR it's probably not the best. But I I don't know maybe maybe we can have maybe more things like this, um, just just where Africans are coming together, not just Africans actually everyone, uh, because that that pigeonhole it. Holding it, it, it exists in every industry. People want to, especially if you're creative, people want you to be. They want to think that they, they know, and, and it just stops you from being creative. Because if if we if you can only do one thing, and your your human beings are not we're not robots. We have different inspirations. We have different feelings. Different things come and make up who we are. So if we can't if we can't embrace or, or show show that, then it, I think it's a problem. Uh, but it's a problem that's always existed, and I don't know if we're going to solve it now. But I, th I think people should. We, we we need to be more 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 ballsy or more more calm. Take a stand. We we almost closed last year because of this this thing. We we had we had a, a time in the summer where it was touch and go. We didn't know if we we're going to be open the next day because it was that bad. Nobody was coming in, and we were not making any money. And we would have a room full of staff with two guests. And so, so it's tough, I, and, and it, I don't think to, to put your foot down, it's, it's not, it's not going to be easy. Um, and and there some days we just thought, should we just uh, swallow and call ourselves Nigeria? Is that going to make it better? But but you have, I think you have to, you have to stand your ground, um, and standing your ground is, is is going to be challenging. But when it, when when I mean we're lucky, Michelin did what they did and recognized us because. That probably helps us stay open, but it, it, it's, it's going to be a challenge. I, and I think if you stand your ground, eventually, you, I mean, some people stand their ground and they don't quite make it. But I think the more of us stand our ground and say we want to be, we want to define ourselves. We don't want to be defined. I, I think, yeah, if if more people have the courage to do that, hopefully things start to change. Thank you. We've got a lady in the front here. Um, thanks for your sincerity, and I've been there once with uh, two friends from Nigeria, actually. Um, do you know what I feel if I can, I hope I won't be sound, sounding patronizing, but uh, one hat that I wear is from the tech world. And there's a thing called creating a new category. Hmm. And perhaps that's where you are. I'm not a, f I'm a foodie, but I'm not a food expert. And perhaps, I understand your resistance to be pigeonholed, especially because half, I mean, your business partner is not even from the continent. And maybe what you need is a good product marketer, uh, somebody who is very creative like both of you and Jeremy, to just help you to create the narrative. It's not the two words. It's the narrative, it's the story. And not the stories, I mean, even with the word narrative is hollow, everybody's using it left, right, and center. You need that right, uh, media agency who are not just about putting you on BBC Vogue, that's boring. Yeah. Anybody can do that. You pick of the course. phone up, you get that article, right? Yeah. But the product is there. Yeah, you've yeah. got the credentials, you've got, you, you've, got the, you've got the Michelin star, like that's the most you can, any restaurateur would want. So here, I think because you guys are relatively young, you, you're both not in your hometown. Uh, finding, and we can take it offline, and I've been thinking of people that I'll be happy to introduce to you. Just like if tomorrow you're creating an app that's creating a new experience that you can't pigeonhole, it's the same, same uh, journey that I feel you want to go because it's yeah. hurting your pocket. I know. Do you uh, understand? Uh, I mean, um, we, we've, we've changed PR companies 
since? No, it's not PR. Okay. That's the thing. Oh, Maybe that's marketing. the mistake. Well, well, PR, I, I mean, I have all the respect for PR and marketing. It's not that. It's literally product marketers who may not even understand it. Actually, it's better if they don't come from the food industry. To just build that narrative, yeah. that brand, something that you and Jeremy are comfortable with. I mean, I mean we're, 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 we're open to it. And, and we, you know what? I, I, I tried to get Facebook will not call. I mean, Facebook denied us the, the, the ability to, to not be a West African. So, so Facebook ha has this list of restaurants. Mm -hmm. If you have a business, you have to follow under one of those. And, mm -hmm. we, we didn't, and the only one closest to us was African. Mm -hmm. And we told them, we're not African. Stop. Because it, it causes a lot of problems. Because if, if people sit down on Facebook and they come and uh, so, but, but then they won't have any, they, they put their foot down. They won't give us any other option. They won't create any. I, I actually created something. And I said, can, can we be called this? And they said, but leave that, leave that. No. That, that. That's different. You need to, because you don't need, I mean, where you are in St. James, you need Londoners. Yeah, right. Yes, it's exactly. not. You're not. Your business model is not reliant on expats from from the from Nigeria or uh, so. Well, uh, and when people vote with their feet, then even if there's no category in Facebook, you know, people will come. Yeah. And I think it's that thing, that's just this elephant in the room that you can't yeah. even. And it happens a lot with artists. Yeah. Also. Also, we try to come up with something, but people always revert back to what, mm. what, what the popular, you know, even if we, call, we called ourselves something, we actually created a cuisine uh, for, for ourselves, but then uh, no one, everyone just, we, we tried it for a year, but no one, no one really bought into it. They just went, kept going back to what they, what they think it is and what they know. So maybe we can try again and yeah. But thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you very much, Ure. Thank you. One, lastly, actually, you've been, as everyone has said, most people have said, you've been very humble about the business journey. Um, you've achieved so much since only just opening in 2017. What have your setbacks been? What have the cha main challenges been? It's nothing but challenges. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, the m defining ourselves, uh, knowing that for some reason, when we started on this journey, we didn't think that we would have to call ourselves a type of restaurant. And we didn't actually, do, but marketing was so far from, from us. And, and I think going in with that, in a sense, probably didn't help because we just didn't have, have a clue. And, and we, we, it's not something we thought, of. We, di we didn't think we'll have to explain our restaurant. We just thought people would cook great food and people would come and they'll enjoy it and it'd be good. But, but that, that was a challenge. Uh, also, um, Having being b being where we are and doing what we're doing, people have defined you, and people people want you to be something. I mean, I I even even we even get Europeans coming in and telling, uh, creating this idea of of this. They, they come in and they tell me that oh, their grandfather lived in Nigeria, or, or I mean, they they, they 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 want there to be this link, this this link where there's this love story between us and Africa and how we're bringing Africa to London. And it, so it's not just Africans, like e even, even the Europeans, they want to hear that story as well. They want, they want it to be something that feels like it's, they're going for a cultural thing and it's, uh, it's going to be authentic and it's going to link them to Africa. We're not doing that. So, we're <laughs> so I think it, it's, th th that was definitely a challenge. I, I think uh, another challenge, well, running the business on its own, and those two things probably hampered our business because people stopped coming. The Europeans didn't know what we were, so they were confused, they stayed away. Uh, the ones that did know what we were, uh, some, some would say, oh, it's too African, when we're not that African. Uh, so, and another group would say, oh, um, yeah, it sounds really exotic and special and something that maybe we'll go to on a special occasion. Well, you need to be a restaurant that everyone wants to go to every every night, not on a special occasion. So, it, it, we, we, yeah, those those things led us to the summer of death last year, <laughs> where 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 we where, and that's when we just put our foot down and we decided that we're going to take things into our own hands, and we we scrapped it a la carte because 
he was taking the piss out of us and coming and uh, ordering jello fries and sitting on the table for three hours. So, so, uh, so, so, so he said, if, 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 people, if people are going to come, even if it's going to be 20 guests, we need to know that those guests are spending a certain amount because we need to stay open because we're paying this rent in this place and all those things just were not just working. So, and lo and behold, when we, when we started the tasting menu, it became busier. I don't know why. We were confused because we just thought there'd be a backlash and we probably have to close. To, but I, we said if we're going to go out, we're going to go out strong. And, uh, but then it was, the, the reaction was different. People uh, now begin to see it as an experience and they, they were excited that they were going on this journey and you come in and it's a blind tasting. We don't tell you what you're having. And I would, as a guest, I would love that. I would love to go to a restaurant and the chef will tell you, I'm going to bring you everything that we have that's great and just sit back and you don't have to look at a menu. But people don't like it. They, they want control and they get angry. But I think generally it's, it, it's been embraced and that has helped. Um, and again, Michelin came to crown us with the final help in, uh, in October. Uh, and business has, has been better since then. Um, but with, with, the, with the restaurant industry, you never know. I mean, I'm, I'm still wary. I still think that one day people are. No one's going to turn up at the door because you, you, you're never comfortable enough to, to say, oh, this is really working. So we'll see. Uh, I think staffing is, is also challenging. Uh, people, Ni Nigerians come into restaurants and they ask why we don't have any black staff in the restaurant. Or, have, uh, or why is there a Chinese guy in this kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, any restaurant recruiting in London is a nightmare. So, Imagine if I, I went on, on uh, caterer.com to recruit and I was only looking for people with African names. I would get nowhere. I, I mean, we, we can only take from the pool that, that we have. And of course, we, in fact, when, before we opened, we had this idea of having these amazing Africans, uh, mixed race people serving our food and it's gonna be all beautiful. And we, <laughs> yeah, we, we look for them, but it, it doesn't happen. I mean, you're in London and you take what you get initially. Uh, so we would love to w work with more people uh, of color, but we can only take from the pool that, that, that were offered, and there are not that many of them. Um, when we opened, we had three, in fact, yeah, we had three African chefs, two, two are female, and people just didn't really see that. They just saw the fact that we had white people serving the food. So th that, was, that was also, also caused the problems. It was not also a challenge, but. Uh, th things are getting better as, 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 you, as your business grows and you become more confident in your product and you're not going to please everyone so you have to do the best thing for the people for your markets and, and your market's not going to be everybody so well you're doing a great job um, unfortunately time has run out but Ire will be around for the next few hours I think um, so if you want to speak to him you can grab him out in the lobby thank you guys thank you Ire.